I have to admit I was more than a little nervous the first time I met Michael Malone. Driving up the path to Burnside and entering the historic home, I didn't know what to expect an Emmy-winning author to be like. What I found was an incredibly gracious and inviting individual with a penchant for fine living and a quirky sense of humor. During our first conversations, Mr. Malone and I discussed the idea of me taking photographs of him in locations where his story had been set. We were both fascinated by the interplay of text and photo, literature, and reality. Yet however interested I was in that idea, I soon came to understand that the real story was the man himself, Michael Malone. Over the past semester, I've had the privilege of getting to know Mr. Malone in a number of roles. Author, educator, husband, father, brother, churchgoer, community member, and friend. Mr. Malone lives in the historic home of Burnside in Hillsboro, with his wife, Maureen Killigan, just miles away from where he was raised as a child. Adjacent to the Malone's backyard is, a Saint, is the Episcopal Church of St. Matthew's. In the 1700s, both Burnside and the land upon which St. Matthew sits was owned by the same family, the Camerons, and so Mr. Malone shares a very special connection with the church. On Sunday afternoons, he helps to lead choir practice in the Ruffin House and assists the music director in directing church plays. Both Mr. Malone and Mrs. Ms. Gilligan share a, a flair for the dramatic and an affection for puppets, props, and costumes. This spring, Mr. Malone is lecturing on both film and drama at Duke University. He is also assisting in the direction of a number of university productions. He often invites guest speakers to his classes including his old friend, the Duke University Orchestra Director. Mr. Malone both adores and is adored by his students, and many rush to catch him after class. He delights in speaking with them and often stays long after the lecture is over. He opens up his office, which, which is a devout Red Sox fan, is decorated with paraphernalia for office hours every week. On most days, he lunches at the faculty commons where he is happily greeted and is the only diner offered a glass of rosé. The wine is not served at lunch. Good food is a common theme in Mr. Malone's life. In fact, his favorite restaurant, Antonia's, is just minutes away from his home. And often on weekends, you can find him brunching there with his brother and sister-in-law. A family of academics, they certainly have their debates, but somehow the good food smooths away any disagreements. Mr. Malone opens his home for concerts such as the Hillsborough Jazz Society to peers, friends, and fellow Hillsborough residents, such as Mayor Stevens. He's a gracious host paying attention to detail and strives to make sure each guest is personally attended to and the event is a success, taking time to enjoy the performance himself. There is no doubt that Mr. Malone is deeply rooted to this North Carolina terror. In this very town, on this plot of land, in the graveyard of St. Matthew's behind his home, is where Mr. Malone will someday rest forever. But for now, Burnside is a home to be filled with laughter, as it was for Easter dinner when all of the Malone siblings gathered to celebrate his daughter's visit, whom he describes as the proudest achievement of his life. Perhaps the best way I could describe Mr. Malone, then, is with the words used for his favorite author, Charles Dickens, a truly genial and loving human.